Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, now, I'm doing a tasting this evening with the Saddleworth Wine Society. Lucky, lucky people. It's where I got into wine through, um, so I've, uh, I like them all and they're very friendly and they always provoke me and they say, oh, we don't like this and we don't like that and I take something along and uh, then they think, well, maybe we've changed our mind. The thing I'm trying to change their mind about tonight, Pinot Noir because they've had a few bad, bad experiences with Pinot Noir. So I've, I've got ten wines to get through in total. I've got to win six in this video, four in the next one. So I don't think I'll change shirts in between. And uh, we'll, we'll take the best ones along tonight and see how we get on. So the first six are the Antipodean selection. Actually not Antipodean, this is uh, Australasian if you want to call it that. Uh, I know some people down there get uh, a bit annoyed. Uh, anyway, uh, Villa Maria, Pinot Noir, Marlborough, 2009 uh, cellar selection. So I've got three New Zealanders and uh, three Australians. Well, straight out of the traps, it smells like a bouncy, young, juicy, cherry and briar rich wine. It smells like it's going to have a bit of grip, a bit of uh, bite, a bit of the slightly tart acidity, but it's got this lovely plush fruit on top of it to, um, uh, yeah, to, to, to overcome that acidity. I think acidity is one of the things they're going to have a problem with tonight because um, some of them don't particularly like it. But I think in a wine, it's essential to give, give something a little zip, a little freshness, especially if you're having it with food. Well, it's a really nice start. That it's got um, juiciness. It's got bouncy, vibrant fruit. Uh, yes, you do notice a little bit of that bite of acidity, but that's what I like about it. Uh, it keeps it all from being too plush, too fresh. Uh, it's a, it's a cushion with firm seams, if you want to call it that. Let's see what the next one's not like. Uh, next two are both from the same winery, uh, Akarua. Uh, this is their second wine called Arua. And uh, they're both in central Otago, both 2009, and I don't know whether the idea is younger vineyards or uh, lesser vineyards, but uh, let's see if we can see it, spot a difference. Okay, the two things I noticed, first of all, first of all, it's not an immediately bouncy, puppy-like and juicy fruity as the Villa Maria was. Second is, it's got what I call life beyond fruit. So whereas the first one was maybe all about richness and juicy, voluptuous fruit, this has got a slightly more stern, slightly more serious edge. Um, it feels like there's the, the, a more minerally character coming through. So maybe a bit of iron, maybe a um, bit of earthiness too. It smells good and it smells interesting. Not too ripe, cherries, uh, raspberries rather than maybe some of the bramble and blackberries in the first one. It is quite a rich wine. It's got uh, quite a lot of depth, a bit of plummy depth. Um, these red berries just maybe veering into the uh, uh, the blackberries, but it's, it, it really is more that raspberry, strawberry, plum, red fruit character. And yes, there's this juiciness, but beholding it all, all together, again, there's, there's this fresh acidity, but there's that grip of minerality too, which uh, makes, it, makes it for me a more interesting wine than the previous one. Let's see what it's uh, Big Brother's like. So this is the Akarua 2009, again, Central Otago. And uh, does it say which part of Akarua is uh, located within the, within the prestigious Bannockburn sub-region? Now there's a winery in, in uh, Geelong in the state of Victoria in Australia uh, that's called Bannockburn. Don't get it confused with that. Now it's interesting because this doesn't feel like a fuller version of the, uh, of the one before. It feels like a more dumb and coiled version, as if there are layers that are waiting to come out, but which, um, which today are just sort of saying, well, I'm not, not quite ready yet. Probably been in a, in a barrel for that bit longer. That's what sort of tends to happen when you've got the uh, more ambitious cuvées. Um, so, um, yeah, it feels like it's got similar fra flavours, these cherries, these red berries, and again, this earthy, ever so slightly iron-rich minerality. Okay, and then when you taste it, um, first thing you notice uh, uh, there's a difference between this and the, the basic Rua. Um, yeah, there's more of that grip of coffee, coffee tangy oak, uh, some toasty, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's more on the coffee and chocolate side. Other thing is it feels like a weightier wine. Uh, there's, well, half a degree difference in alcohol. Yeah, this one's, first one's 13 and a half, this one's 14. So you get a more plush, warm character, but still the fruit flavours still feel quite tightly coiled and wound as if it's a wine that um, yeah you're seeing more of the framework now less of the interior which is going to emerge in time so maybe the Rua is the one for now the Akaru is the one for um, a couple of years time It'll be worth the wait now because I, I think that's a really tasty wine I see both of them pretty good uh, let's get into Australia now all these are South Australia first um, and third are Adelaide Hills 
Uh, middle one, well, we'll get on to that. So this is Wakefield, known in uh, some parts of the world as Taylor's. Uh, 2009, uh, Pinot Noir from Adelaide Hills. It's about a tenner. Now there's Adelaide Hills and Adelaide Hills. There's Adelaide Hills where Zinfandel ripens, and there's Adelaide Hills which is cool enough for Pinot. So this, this must be on the higher, cooler bits. Stick my nose in and one of the first things I see is mint. Uh, there's this uh, really obvious uh, Australian, South Australian mintiness. And I don't really want that in a Pinot Noir, I'll, I'll be honest. It does feel like there's some quite plush berry behind, but it's, it's more on the, what I call that jammy dodger edge. Um, it doesn't feel as subtle as the New Zealand ones, but um, it's a bit cheaper. And it, that cherry jammy dodger edge continues when, when you taste it, but for me that mint just gets in the way, takes away from... I, I don't want mint in my Pinot, I don't want mint in most wines. And, don't mind a bit of it and a bit of Cabernet as long as there's other things to uh, overcome it. But for me, this misses, this is it's like a flavour that someone's stuck in there and uh, uh, it, it, it just feels a bit gawky as it is. Let's see whether the next one, which is the uh, the only one of these with a cork in, uh, Tapa Napa, which is uh, Brian Crozer's venture with um, some eminent French people. Uh, and it's not from Adelaide Hills, it's from the Fleurier Peninsula, so a bit further south, closer to the sea. Fleurier Peninsula, uh, I think it's the bit below uh, McLaren Vale. So uh, McLaren Vale, known for quite hearty reds, but get a bit further south, get that maritime climate in, and uh, yeah, it cools, you, it cools your vineyards down quite a bit. And it's also called Foggy Hill, is it called Foggy Hill? Uh, Foggy Hill Vineyard. So um, yeah, pin, sometimes Pinot Noir, uh, if, you, if you do it somewhere where the sunlight is almost too direct, you get uh, this character in the grapes which is distinctive, you get this really warm, earthy, baked character. But um, for me, some of the great Pinots come from places where there is always a little bit of cloud cover or there's a bit of haze in the air. Uh, sometimes too, too much direct sunlight, Pinot, it's just a sensitive little flower. It's like, it's like someone with sort of lots of freckles. Uh, it doesn't like the sun, direct sunlight too much. Well, there's none of the minty character here. What there is, it, it feels like there's a warmth, uh, but a juiciness to the fruit. You have some, so you're back to that um, that Pinot Allure that you were getting on the uh, the two Acarua wines. And uh, yes, it feels like it's got, not going to be a, uh, a light-bodied wine. Certainly feels like there's going to be uh, a little less acidity maybe than in the uh, uh, in the in the three New Zealand ones. But there's going to be some of that Pinot knee tremble factor, if you want to call it that. Yeah, there's a juiciness and an allure about that. It still feels like it's a, a work in progress. Feels tight, young, um, like the fruit needs to blossom more. Not in quite the same way as the Akarua. The Akarua felt like a finer, brighter fruit. This it feels like a broader, earthier fruit. Both have their places. I, I, I like both of them. I think this one maybe is the one that's going to... Um, uh, keep going and keep going for longer. Uh, the Akarua maybe will lose some of those uh, bright charms and uh, not sure what's going to be left beyond. But here it feels like there's a core of, uh, uh, of earthiness, of terroir coming through that uh, makes me think that the weight will be worthwhile. Um, tasty wine there. And um, yeah, I'm not sure whether I prefer that or, that or the Akarua. It really is. Um, yeah, heads or tails there, but they're both are good. Final wine, uh, maybe it's not going to be the best. Uh, because it's uh, not in as heavy a bottle as the one before, but it's the oldest, so that's why I put it at the end. Nepenthe 2008 Pinot from Adelaide Hills. And I think we're back more to the uh, um, the Wakefield Taylor level of prices here, which is about 10 quid. Uh, Tapa Napa was up to 25, but yeah, here I think we're back down to 10, 12 quid. And we're back to some of that minty, more maybe on the eucalyptus side here. Uh, it's not quite as uh, as prominent uh, as in the Wakefield, um, and it's got the same sort of red fruit, the cherries, the red berries behind it. Uh, it feels like a more simple wine than the Tapa Napa, um, but um, let's give it a whirl, see what it's like. For me, it feels like a wine that's not quite sure what it wants to be. Uh, there's this, um, yeah, there's this bright juiciness to it, but then what I'm left with, it's ever so slightly hard finish. I don't know whether it would have been better as a two-year-old wine, whether it's just losing that freshness and hasn't really got the uh, the depth, the body, the structure to um, to go on, but it's lost any, any brightness of youth and I don't feel, see anything really coming to replace it. But um, it's been a nice six, a set of six wines. Uh, Favourites are the Tapa Napa and the Akarua, but um, 
they're the most expensive. So um, I suppose that tells you something. You pays your money, you takes your choice with Pinot, or do you? Mate, I'm going to do another one, a, a video now, and I've got two Chileans in there, two French. So let's see how we get on with those. See you in a bit. Thank you.